Hello icons. Today let's recap equivalence, fractions and decimals. First, what is equivalence? Equivalence is balancing the number. Balancing the number on both the sides. LHS should be equal to RHS. Left hand side number should be equal to right hand side number. That is nothing but equivalence. So how do you do that equivalence? Let's say, uh, let me take number 42. Okay. So to write, to express 42, I can represent 42 using many other numbers and symbols. What are symbols? Symbols are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Right. For now, let's leave division because you haven't learned division yet. So let's express number 42 using different numbers and symbols. Okay. Using the mind map, let's represent 42 using different numbers and symbols. Number 42. One thing what you have to remember is you have to balance both the sides. Okay. Now here is 42. So if I am representing this number using small any other small numbers or any other symbols I have to make sure that it should be equal to 42 now is 40 plus 2 is 42 I use different numbers now which is equal to this I can also write 35 plus 7 which is also 42 and again, I use different numbers, but I am making sure that both are equal. Okay, next, 48 minus 6. So, I use the symbol subtraction here. And I wrote two different numbers, 48 minus 6, which is again equal to 42. Now shall we do with multiplication? 1 42 za. 1 into any number is number itself. So 1 42 za is 42. 6 7 za. What is 6 7 za? 42 again. Both are different numbers. So when you multiply this, you will get 42. So this is how you should balance. Shall we try with one more subtraction? Um, maybe 50 minus 8. So, representing a number using different numbers and symbols and making it equal to the given number is nothing but balancing the number. That is nothing but equivalence. You are making equal. You are making the numbers equal. Alright? So, this is what about equivalence and you have you have to do four problems on this equivalence all right now the second thing which is fractions now let's discuss fractions so in the video you have seen example of apple right so when apple is cut into two pieces it is half and half right so you know what is one by two so the top number is called numerator and the bottom number is called denominator and you have already done a task where you represent the shaded part isn't it you have represented a fraction of shaded part today also we are going to do the same thing okay i'm going to explain two all right now so here is something which has been divided equally okay So this is how it is. So first tell me how many total parts are here? 4. But I will make it into 8 now. So now how many parts are there? In this box 2. In this box 2 again. In this 2 again. Again 2. So totally how many parts are there? Totally there are 8. So let me shade few parts all right now 
represent this in the form of fraction. First, write total number of parts in the denominator. How many parts are there? Totally, it's 8. So, out of 8, how many are shaded? How many are shaded? 1, 2, 3, 4 parts are shaded. So, this is the fraction for shaded region of the given picture. So, how do you read this? 4 parts are shaded out of 8 parts. Alright? One more. So, I am drawing a circle. Okay, let me divide this into... 8 equal parts. Okay? Now, in that 8 equal parts, again, I am shading. Okay? I shaded 2 till now and 1 more. Now, how do you write fraction for this? So, 3 parts are shaded out of 8 parts. So, again, this is the fraction for the shaded region of the given picture. Now, if I ask you, what is the fraction for unshaded region? Then you have to count unshaded region. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 by 8 will be the fraction for unshaded region. Hmm? Here, what is the unshaded region fraction? Again, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 by 8 is unshaded. Alright, but in the practice book, only the task is given for shaded region and you need to do only for shaded region. But I am just explaining you that if, if we ask you to find out the fraction of unshaded region, then you have to count the unshaded parts. Alright? So, this is all about fractions. Now, let's discuss decimals. So, as, um, as I mentioned earlier, you have seen an example of apple in the fractions video. In that, you learned that when one apple, when one apple is been cut into two parts, this is half and this is also half. Right? And this half is called 0 0.5. This half is called 0 0.5 which is a decimal. Why is it called a decimal? Because this is not completely 0 and not completely the next number. What is the next number for 0? It's 1. So, it is not completely 0 and it is not completely 1. If you take only this, is this complete 0? No. Is it completely 1? Again, no. So, it is in between that which is 0 0.5 that is half. Now, on the number line, you will represent the number which is in decimal. Okay. Suppose if here is the number line like this. So, this is 0 to 1 number line. In, zero, in between 0 to 1, what are the decimals we have? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1. So, these are the decimals in between 0 and 1. 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 are the decimals in between 0 and 1. Okay. So, in the practice book, 0 0.5 is been given as 1 by 2, which is nothing but half. If you see here, this is exactly in the middle, which is nothing but half. So, in the practice book, it is given as 1 by 2. Don't get confused. It is nothing but half, which is 0 0.5. And the question is, and the question is, show the decimal which is near to 0 0.10, which is nothing but 0 0.1. 0 0.10 is nothing but 0 0.1. And they have plotted few 
points okay like this is a this is b saying c d so which point is close to 0.1 so which point is close point a so you have to write point a shall we see one more example one more example again from 0 to 1 it has been given like this a number line where 0 and 1 is given and only half is given and no other decimals are given in the practice book but you are very intelligent right you know what decimal comes in between these right now again the points here is one point here is one point one more point is here and the other point is here this is a this is b this is c and this is d okay can you just guess where is this maybe 0.1 where is this maybe 0.3 here maybe 0.4 and 0.5 you can guess it right so which letter has which letter best represents the location of 0.90 so in this which letter best represents 0.90 so 0.90 is nothing but 0.9 so where is 0.9 here no here no this is 0.5 so this is 1 so just before 1 there will be 0.9 so what which letter best represents letter d letter d or point d best represents 0.9 maybe one can be here okay here is one so just before 1 it is 0.9 so which letter best represents letter d represents 0.9 shall we see one more one last okay again a number line where zero and one is given and half is written in the half is written exactly in the middle okay now again few points are given here it is a this is b c and d tell me which letter best represents 0.6 think so this is maybe 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 This is zero point five, zero point six, zero point seven, zero point eight, zero point nine, and one. So, which letter best represents zero point six? Is letter B. This is how you have to do your task. That's all for today. Keep learning. Bye.